2025. The court finds that the state has presented sufficient evidence, both direct and circumstantial, to allow his charge to go to the jury. The motions for judgment of acquittal are denied. Acquittal denied for the latest on what happened in the George Zimmerman murder trial. We go now to Sanford and Jay Gray. Hey there. Yeah, it was an important and at times a very emotional day inside the courtroom here. Jury for the first time hearing from the families of both the men at the center of this high profile trial. Testimony began today with Trayvon Martin mother. Listening to what she told jurors was her son's cries for help the night he was killed. Ma'am, that screaming or yelling, do you recognize that? Yes. And who do you recognize that to be, ma'am? Trayvon Benjamin Martin. Sabrina Fulton remained steadfast as the defense suggested she hoped with her son's voice she heard on that call. As a mom, you still hope that your son, Trayvon Martin, would not have done anything that would have led to his own death, correct? What I hope for is that this wouldn't have never happened and he would still be here. Absolutely. That's what I, that's my hope. Javaris Fulton also told jurors he believes it was his younger brother yelling on the call to police. But the defense pushed back, pointing out he had initially told a reporter he wasn't sure who was screaming. I guess it was listening to it was clouded by shock and denial and sadness. I didn't really want to believe that it was him. Next, testimony shifted from the emotions of Martin's family to the technical aspects of the medical examiner's work in the case. There are two holes on the right ventricle of the heart. There is no chance he can survive. No chance. Zero. That's not my note. The cross-examination from the defense was lengthy and at times contentious. Attorney Don West questioning the methods and results of the state's final witness. The state will then announce that we will rest our case. After the prosecution rested, the defense picked up immediately, focusing attention back to the 911 call and who um, was screaming for help. Do you know whose voice that was screaming in the background? Yes, sir. And whose voice was that? George. Not only I just heard you scream, I felt you scream like my nephew is screaming for his life. But as the prosecution asked if they'd ever heard George scream like that before, Zimmerman's mother and uncle remained certain the voice was his. Yeah, and after today's session ended, a very busy session inside the courtroom, defense attorney Mark Amaro was asked how long he thought it might take for him to present his case. He said that he was going to take his time, the witnesses to call, but that it could be over sometime late next week. This is the latest live here outside the Seminole County Courthouse. I'm Jay Gray, First Coast News, Beast 12, ABC 25. All right, Jay, thank you very much for that. Our legal panel here now on Phillips, Richard Kurtz. So big day in court today. The jury got to hear from both the family members of George Zimmerman as well as Trayvon Martin. John, let's start with you. I mean, break it down for us. Yeah, we started off this morning. You know, I, I was told a week ago that they were going to end with the family members, mm -hmm. but apparently all the evidence got locked up in a locker mm -hmm. and they couldn't find the key. So they had to switch, you know, play things out, play the, put the family on, and then put the medical examiner on, which didn't end so well. They got a locksmith in to unlock it in between. A, a, a lot of the, almost kind of becoming this, this comedy of errors, it, so it seems to me at least, on the prosecution side, uh, get this medical examiner up there, and uh, he's talking over the judge, he's talking over questions. I mean, does he hurt the prosecution side of things just with that, you know, kind of uh, fumble? Yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, you, obviously, you want your last witness to be very persuasive, you're very, you know, Im impactful. You really want to send the jury out with something they can lock their teeth into. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the way he testified and the changes in his testimony and the things that he said, it just wasn't what I would have wanted to close with if I was the prosecution in this case. In depositions, we're pretty clear with experts. Do not change your testimony after today. We can't do anything else with it. You know, make sure you don't bring anything. The other side usually says, make sure you don't bring anything to the courtroom. Sure. He violated both of those rules, and so it, it just became crazy. Sure. Now, the defense asked for an acquittal after the prosecution rested its case. The judge said, took only a few seconds, and <laughs> said no. Was yeah, that... that that's that standard procedure. We do it all the time. It's very rare. I've had several, actually, where I got judgment of acquittals and judges here in Duval hmm. County that have done that. But 99% of your cases are, thank you very much for <laughs> commenting, Mr. Kurtz. Sit down. We're done. And that's what happened today. No Sh surprise. Shocking thing. The shocking thing was that he didn't rebring up Stand Your Ground. They, right. they made an effort 
pretrial to act like they were going to bring Stand Your Ground back up and even made a big deal over reserving it and that never got uttered again. And I was a little surprised by that. Now, Lara made an interesting uh, comment during uh, the motion itself uh, to quit when he said, you know, as, as the defense, I wouldn't actually need to call a witness. It seems like the pro prosecution has already failed in providing uh, any sort of evidence. I mean, what do you think about that, that statement? He backed down some of it during the press conference, said, oh, we never win these things. And that's, okay. that's what a lawyer does. You want to you boast and pretend that you've just put on the best case or you've, you've defended against the case of your life because mm -hmm. you're trying to sway the judge to go in your favor. You don't say, well, my case stunk. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's just it's boasting. Sure. But there's some times where you actually feel it and you believe it. Mm -hmm. And I think in this case, there was a lot of stuff that goes that way but the problem is the burden is so high right. it's basically is in a light most favorable to the state mm -hmm. could they have anything to get you to a jury mm -hmm. and so if you take everything that they possibly said and just let's take it in their light yes it makes it now, as far as danger ground goes are we already done with that is there any way they can come back to it I, I can't imagine I mean maybe after the close of the defense they might have one more chance where they could say mad judge take a look at it but but I thought it was today or I thought it was first free trial or never and then it was today or never so I don't, you never know and real quick yeah. weigh in who, who do you think going for right now well, you know it's funny we talked about this off the record I mean I actually think that, that this has gone very well for the defense I think they've scored points throughout the state's case and I think it's going very, very well for the defense I, I thought it was powerful today you know Sabrina um, was just powerful and I thought it went well. Is it second degree murder? I don't know. They'd have to prove spite. I don't know if you see spite here. Um, it's tough. All right, guys, we appreciate okay. your time. Thanks. Obviously, switching gears in the defense side of things. All through next week, and we'll see these guys then. All right, still ahead.